हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू सेंट एंड्रीज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट गुड़गांव दिल्ली एन सी आर सेंट एंड्रीज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट इज द बेस्ट कॉलेज इन डेली एन सी आर एंड द फास्टेस्ट अपकमिंग कॉलेज इन एंटायर द कंट्री इट हैज़ अ वेराइटी ऑफ कोर्सेज टू चूज फ्राम फ्राम बी टेक बी बी ए बी सी ए एंड ऑल्सो अपकमिंग विद एम बी ए आर्किटेक्चर एंड लॉ दिस इज़ द बेस्ट कॉलेज and provide best education in the industry it provides 100% placements and gives 100% job assistance this is the best career choice that you can make for yourself or for your kids the subject we are studying here in principles of software engineering code is cse 302f this is a cse 6 semester subject the syllabus is in accordance with mdu university rohtak The topic we shall be discussing in here is testing and maintenance the various software testing techniques like uh, verification validation black box testing white box testing the objectives principles testability and test case design I Shalini from CSE department shall take you forward in the video software testing technique software testing is the evaluation of the software against requirements that are gathered from user and system specification testing is conducted at the phase level in software development life cycle or at module level in program call so software testing comprises of validation and verification right so what do you test you see at the phase level if in the as in the sdlc model it is done at phase level and in the uh, program level it is done at the Uh, like uh, module level right uh, so it is basically done so that you evaluate based on the requirement that you gave your system and the that you gather from the users or your design specification or system specifications okay <coughs> now the two processes are validation and verification the two techniques see what is validation validation is the process of examining whether or not the software satisfy the user requirement it is carried out at the end of the sdlc if the software matches requirement for which it was made it is validated so what is validation this is the process of examining whether or not the software is specifying the user requirement so what is the main aim or the focus is on the main focus is on the user requirement and when it is done at the end of the sdlc model so validation will ensure that the product under development is as per the user requirements now validation will answer the very basic question are we developing the product which attempts all the user needs from this software right and this will always emphasize on user requirement this is the fourth time in telling you so you have to keep your this clarity in your mind that what is validation looking forward to whom with whom you validate the system so you validate the user requirements remember this okay next we come to verification now what is verification the verification is the process of confirming if the software is meeting the business requirement and is developed adhering to the proper specification and methodology so in verification you see if the software is meeting the business requirement so you see whether business requirements are your design specification so if it meets the design requirements or the design specifications and methods and verification ensures that the product being developed is according to design specification okay and this is going to ask the answer the very basic question are we developing this product by firmly following all design and specification so verification concentrates on design and system specification now if i ask this is to do you the difference between the two you should be able to define both so what is validation done against user requirements and what is verification done against design specifications right validation is done in the end right verification will be done after the design process it will be incorporated with each and every phase so you please remember this and hmm, what are we concentrating in there so you should remember this so what are the target of test error false and failure so your test aim to find the goal of the test is basically to find error false and failure now what is the difference between the three terms see errors these are actual coding mistakes made by developers so in addition there is a difference in output and software and desired output is considered as an error so what is an error you 
developer made something and whatever he made there was an error in the coding part so the that coding error which he uh, made a mistake that is an error right and this will be seen in the difference in output of the software right now what is a fault see when error exists you have a fault a fault is a bug we say that you are finding bug there's a bug there's a bug so that bug is fault and this is the result of an error so if there is an error it might result into fault but if it may or may not like it can be both the cases but if there is a fault that is always due to an error right so this will result in a system fail and this fault then results into a failure what is a failure it is said to be the inability of the system to perform the desired task so what the system was meant to do it is not be able to do that why because of the failure why the failure because there was a fault why a fault because there was an error right i hope it's clear to you okay so you know it can be done manually and automated as the name suggests there's nothing rocket science is manual is done by humans and automated will be done by software tools so in manual you will be Hmm. you will take help from the tools but not fully it will be done by tools so you will have testers who will prepare test cases and then it will be checked and report the error to the manager in manual it was it will be time and resource both consuming it will be slower in automated you will <coughs> put the test case or put the tool in it and then you put your code in it and then you find the error so that is an automated testing right so you can take both also you can take and for everyone also depending upon your need and time okay now there are basically two approaches that is the functionality and implementation see as the name suggests so functionality testing means you are testing the functionality without taking the actual implementation into concern right you're not concerned with what is going inside the system and in implementation <coughs> you will see what is going inside the system as well as you will see what is the functionality right okay so black box testing is the one that does not need to see what is happening inside the system and implementation will actually look into how is the things are happening right so it is uh, the next topic that we follow black box testing it is carried out to test functionality of the program it is also called behavioral testing the tester in this case has a set of input values and respected desired results right so there is a set of values and you have results in it the providing input if the output matches with the desired results the program is tested okay as problematic right so you have a set of input and corresponding to that input you have a set of out outputs so you match the two if it's okay if it's matching it's okay if it doesn't matching it's not okay so that's black box testing See here in this diagram, there's input and so here you inside there's something but you don't know what's something because it's black in color. You can't see exactly what is deep inside it, right? So <clears throat> this is what happens. You don't know the code that is inside but you do the end conduct. You see how it is conducting, like how your input is giving what kind of a value to you. <clears throat> Next we have a black box testing techniques. Okay. So there are various techniques that we use to do a black box testing for it is an equivalence class. See as the name says equivalence class. So it means you will uh, you will divide it into similar classes. You will test one element from the class and you will pass the entire class. That is equivalence class. Now the boundary value. Boundary means you will take the highest, you will take the lowest and you will pass all in between. Right? And then there is a cause effect graphing. Cause see in both the previous ones only one input at, uh, at a time is tested. In cause and effect, input output is wherein combination of input values are tested in a systematic. So you combine like what this is, what co because when I'm giving this input, what kind of uh, output I'm getting. When I'm giving this input, what kind. So there will there'll be a set of it, right? <coughs> then we have a pairwise testing. See the behavior of software depends on multiple parameters. So in pairwise testing, the multiple parameters are tested pairwise for the different values. So you have a pair and you test it on various various parameters values then you have state based testing you know the system changes state and provision of input so these systems are tested based on their states and input so you actually see what kind of states the system is into provisioned into right then we have white box testing see now it is clear what is inside right 
so it's a similar way it is connected to test programs and its implementation both right so in order to approve code efficiency it is known as structural testing so you have an input you have an output and you have an entire system so you can actually look into how it is being done where in see if i look at black box so in this black box there was nothing that were clears where in this white box testing i can see everything right so that's the difference so in this testing method the design and structure of the code are known to the tester so you know the design as well as you know the code too and programmers of the code conduct this test on the code so you're doing it on the code so there are uh, this control flow and data flow testing so the purpose of control flow testing is to set up test cases which cover all statements and branch conditions so you see the statements also and you see the branch conditions also so the branch conditions are tested for both being true and false so for yes also you will test for no also you will test and you will test the control also in data flow this discovers all data variables included in the program so whatever local global and the kind of variables that you any data variable that you're having that's holding a data you will be covering this so this will test where the variables are declared and defined and where they are used so you'll basically seeing like where you're defining it and where you're using it <coughs> next we come to software testing objectives the major objective of software testing are as follows first the finding defects which may get created by the programmer while developing the software so anything that is being developed while making it so these are the that is the first objective then gaining confidence in and providing information over the level of quality then quality level is the second objective then prevent defect is the third and then you have the fourth one that is to make sure that the end result meets the business and user requirement you can split this into two also business requirement and user requirements you can write it as one point also right and to ensure that it satisfies the business brs that is business requirement specification and srs is software requirement specification right so your business requirement specification will come into the designing phase right and your srs in the requirement phase so i hope you really are aware of the sdlc models because these are the one that you are be using throughout the system so that worst model that you developed uh, that you studied is very important please keep that thing in mind and last is to gain the confidence of the customer by providing them a quality product so i hope you are clear with the objectives so next we move to the principles so in total there are seven principles so what they say that is testing shows presence of defects so first principle is to find the defects then you do an exhaustive testing is not possible so like you take one part and you take a combinations of them right early testing is like you start early so that you do not have uh, do not waste your resources and money defect clustering is there are a number of defects wherein they are clustered into one and then you um, find a defect as to what exactly like all the defects are clustered at one place so that is defect testing now <laughs> pesticide paradox this comes from the word pesticide only see uh, in farming also when you used to uh, spray too much of pesticide the worms used to become pesticide uh, i would say immune right so they don't any show any kind of they don't die with the pesticides so in a similar way when you keep on applying some kind of a test cases throughout the system they don't uh, respond to it so that is the pesticide paradox and this testing is context independent so like in one context you are testing suppose if i am doing functional testing or unit testing and then integration testing errors are not covered in this right and there is absence of errors fallacy so they are totally errors that are totally absent and fall falsify the entire system so they don't actually get caught so these are the seven principles <coughs> <coughs> next we have testability so what is testability see testability in simple terms can be defined as the extent of ease with which a system can be tested so here in actually you see like to what extent or ease you test the system the iso defines testability as attributes of software that bear on the effort needed to validate the software product right so what you're doing is you're defining testability as attributes of software that bear on the effort needed to validate the software product right so to make your product what are the effort that you have actually put into that is testability that is so that three essential thing the sooner the better why because you don't want to make if there's an error into the initial stages and you find it out at later stages so your that amount of time and effort is gone 
right higher testability better result same cost and lower testability viewer weak results and same cost so you have to see these three conditions and then there are various measures that can enhance the testability like transparency that is no in and out about the system what it does and what it is supposed to do you have a clear cut understanding of how it is performing update the system documentation right so you update the entire documentation then you have a comprehensive well structured code so there's a very well well structured code that's very very comprehensive then you have clarity in software requirements and then isolation isolation they try techniques and mention codes by which parts of the system can be tested in isolation and you document each concern separately and make the results visible so that is testing in isolation then you go for a test environment simulation that is strike a balance between representatives and flexibility in favor of the system and give in and give in suggestions wherein you can opt for automated test that is you stimulate the entire testing environment has been simulated so this is how it is done next we come to test case designing see first there are various various steps in into and there are various techniques see deriving test case directly from the requirement specification or based on the black box testing so these are boundary value analysis we already discussed equivalence partitioning decision table testing then you have state transition diagrams and you have use case testing then deriving directly from the structure of the component of the system right so what are they this is the white box testing statement coverage branch coverage path coverage lcs ag testing then you have deriving test cases based on testers experience on similar testing and test intuition that is error guessing and exploratory this is your experience right so you have black box technique and white box and you have experience so based on that and there are various questions that comes like what are the various testing techniques so you need to know validation verification both and you need to be aware of black box and white box testing and then you have objectives of the testing principles what do you mean by testability and a short known design on test case design so i hope this is very clear to you because i try really try to keep this very very simple so that you can understand it i hope you liked it thank you